My name is David Lair, superintendent at Sumter Correctional Institution. This film is produced as a result of Florida Department of Corrections' vision in assuming a strong advocacy role for public safety to meet the challenge facing Florida. We know of no greater challenge facing us than the loss of our nation's most vital asset, our youth. We are losing too great a number of our youth to the choice of criminal lifestyle, which will result in incarceration. It is genuinely hoped that the impact of what you will see in this video moves you as an individual to recognize, regardless of your background or circumstances, that you do have a choice. The consequences of your choice towards criminal thinking are clearly portrayed in this video by real people who, after the fact, are trying to impact and plant a seed that you do not want to live the circumstances of incarceration. This film was not made with the intent to scare. Rather, its intent is to purely inform you and provide you a snapshot of what life inside is like. Realize that life inside is clearly a consequence of choice. It is hoped as a result of this film, it will deter you from choices leading to criminal behavior. Thank you. Hello, I'm Captain James Schultz, an officer at Sumter Correctional Institution. I wish I could say that I'm pleased to introduce this video, but I am not. This film had to be produced because there is a serious crisis in America. The youth of our nation are committing crimes at a rate unparalleled in our history. The average age of those entering our, our penal institutions is getting younger every year. This video is for you, whether you are a young person heading down a wrong road or a parent whose child is out of control. Everyone is affected either directly or indirectly. This cycle of behavior is destroying our nation the most valuable and unreplenishable asset, America's youth. I urge you to watch this presentation with an eye to the future. The officers and inmates open their hearts and souls so you can see why things are going so terribly wrong. Listen and learn. Our future, yours and mine, depend on what we do. We are all captains of our own destiny. America offers unlimited opportunities if you only go after them. A half hour of your time could make all the difference in the world. Make an investment that will reap benefits for a lifetime. Truly open your heart and mind to what this film has to offer. Thank you. The lifers here at Sumter took this challenge. They developed this program. They're very committed to working with young people in a way that is not a scared straight program, but a reality program to help young people to understand that this is not an environment they want. And basically that's where, you know, the life of the group stems at. We try to use our experiences. We show them, we show them the prison life. We got, it's got a two-phase program. We show them the program in itself as far as the compound, what it takes to survive in prison. Do you have a heart, to, you, know, to, you know, survive in prison? And then we get on the second half, we do have to retort the compound, then we show them our life. We show them what we've been through. We show them examples, how, how we got involved in it. Very rarely you find a kid you can stare, scare straight. So that's where me, Wood, Stone, you know, a couple of other guys, you know, in the lifers group, we say, okay, we're gonna use ourselves as a road sign. You know, you look at us as a road sign, because sell, when you drive down that street, you see that fallen rock, a sharp curve, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna slow down. You're gonna look at that sign, because you're taking it for granted. And that's what we try to show them, to use us as that sign. And there's nothing to look forward to. But like I said, if we can just help you stay out of this prison, we can find this Freedom is all a man's got, and his honor in himself, and the ability to serve with that. started about six years ago. A group of guys on the compound that got together, they got tired of seeing a lot of inmates young inmates get turned out to the system. So basically what they did is they came together and they want to start an organization called Lifers. The group basically is set up to where you have a life skills and we started developing more programs. Something get guys involved in on a positive tip, as you can say. 
Because a lot of guys on the confine, you're either involved in drugs, you're either involved in the gangs, you're involved in you know, drinking alcohol, you name it. So these guys got together and started developing this group called the Lifers. Captain Schultz, the guy went to Captain Schultz, and a lot of people, you know, they looked at Captain Schultz like he was crazy. You know, but Captain Schultz backed us, you know, and went, you know, 110% with us and got the group going. At first, we started out about probably 30 guys, and it started growing and growing. And we started, then we started about, about three years ago, we got into the tour program. We had one officer that was doing it. He basically was running a tour program for like every Wednesday, the kids would come in. He'd take them around the compound and tell them things like, you know, you look like you sit on the sun, like how many bricks are in the building. I mean, certain things were, you know, it, it's good for the kids. I mean, they, they see the prison firsthand, but in the same time, they weren't relating. So you can, you can sit there and talk to a kid all day long. But if you don't sit there and say, hey, man, I understand where you've been. I understand what you're going through. Or, or you know, I've been where you've been. Nine, ten times, the kids were literally crazy. So basically, that's where we stepped in. We showed the captain, we showed this institution that we can use our stories, we can use our life, where we messed up. I'm not going to try to intimidate you or anything. I am going to tell you about some decisions I made when I was a teenager and how I read from them. I came to prison when I was 17 years old. Because when I was out there, I decided to do what was cool. I decided to get high. I decided to break into homes. I decided to learn about girls. I decided to skip school. Because that was what was cool. That's what my friends were doing out there. And in that gym, there was about 200 off duty inmates, drinking wine, lifting weights, gambling, boxing. There's nothing better to do than to try that new guy out there on the wreck here. See that? Trying to wound me or trying to kill me? Huh? Huh? Kill me. They were. And you know what? It was exciting to me because when that steel was stuck in my chest and I was bleeding out of my mouth, they were kicking me and spitting on me and laughing at me. It was fun today. So I'm going to tell you something. I decided I was going to get just as psychotic as these people in here because I was the only one who was going to look out for Joey in here. This is what I was learning when that judge sent me to 18 months. When I got out, my parents gave me $500. They gave me a place to stay. They got me a credit union. And before long, I acquired a house, a car, a truck, a woman who was ready to marry me. And I was making an honest living. And I was proud of myself because I was doing what was right. I wasn't coming back here no more. But I tell you what, what you learn learning here, you can't turn off. One of them is reacting and thinking. The very first time I got in a serious argument, my mother and father were laying dead in front of me. The same two people who brought me in this world. They were wonderful parents. And someone told you to come here today? People are starting to tell you what to do already. They're getting a hold of your life already. But it's getting easier and easier. Do you got mothers and fathers out there? Do you? Yes, sir. Do you love them? Yes, sir. Is anybody here not love their parents? Let me tell you something. When you get in trouble, you're killing them slowly. Because you know what they're saying? Not my baby. Not my child. It's the neighborhood. It's the school. It's his friends. But it's you who decides to do right or wrong. And you can decide still whether you want to come here or not. You can decide not to kill your parents, love me. We show them the program in itself as far as the compound, what it takes to survive in prison. Do you have a heart to you know, you know, survive in prison? The homosexuality. Prison, nothing is for free. The first institution I came to was Sumner CI back in eight, 1989. But when I came to prison, I came with no money, none of my money caught up. And uh, I met one guy, he came and started talking to me. About three or four days later, I went out to the gym to play uh, some uh, volleyball. When I went out there, I went into the gym to use the restroom. When I walked in there, there was the, the guy that had approached me by my bunk and three or four of his friends had came up to me with knives and had told me to go ahead and take my clothes down because they was gonna rape me because I, they figured that I had owed them. And I put up with it for about two or three months. And then after that, I gave in. And 
I just didn't care whether I lived or not because I figured doing 50 years, I ain't going to make it back out of prison anyway. So I started going and what they would call tricking in prison, selling my body to get my weed, to get alcohol, because I just stayed drunk because I didn't care. I just lived from one day to the next. But as a result of that, I've got HIV positive, but now I'm full-blown AIDS and with not very much time that left. And it's all because of the decisions I made. And because of the wrong decisions I made right now, I'm now on CM, which is closed management, because I wanted to go get high because I thought Doing the things with my friends was all right, and I got caught, and I did. I knew the risk I was taking, but it was my way of thinking. Because I've done it all these years and never got caught, I figured well, I can just do it this one time, and I get caught, and I'll be able to get away with it. Well, you know, a lot of these kids, you can't, especially in the '90s. This is called, this is called Generation Predator. You're talking about kids that learn nothing but to kill and steal. So you gotta, you gotta break them down. You gotta show them. That's about all you can do. When I was 15 years old, right where you are, I had 51 counts of burglary. If your parents have ever had their car broken into in Lake County, I probably did. No joke. When I was 15 years old, I stood up and said, ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. This is my life, and I'm gonna do it the way I want to do it. Just like you. I thought I had all the answers. Well, let me tell you, it's just a matter of time. Come on, Pip. Come on. Come on. What's your name? Jimmy. Your name Jimmy? What's your hand for? Arson. Arson? Against who? Uh, against the building. Who's in the building? Nobody? I don't know. You don't know who was in the building. You just burned the building down. Tell them why you're here. Uh, Judge ordered me to be here. That's why? Tell them why you are here, man. Uh, because I made the wrong choice to burn the building down. Come on, here, Judge ordered me. Come on. We're going to help you out today, all right? We're not trying to humiliate you. Hold this. You know what that is? A mirror? That's a mirror. Look in the mirror. What do you see? Me? So it's a me. What, what do you see? Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. You don't like looking in that mirror? Why? Oh, oh. You don't like what you see? Look in the mirror. Tell your peers who you are. Tell them. Hold You don't know? You don't even know who you was trying to burn up. You don't know nothing. You just want to get through this damn tour, get back out there and burn somebody else up. Huh? So you say you're not going to do it again? No. What's going to stop you? Me. How are you going to do that? You didn't stop you before. How are you going to stop? <laughs> you, see, you haven't got honest. See, he hasn't been honest with himself. You see, I'm just like you. I don't like looking in this mirror. You know why? Because I don't like what I see. You know why I don't like what I see? Because I don't like myself. That's why I spend so much trying, time trying to be somebody else. See, I don't like who I've become. This is where it starts at, right here. You got to change this. You got to change the way you think. You got to stop seeking that attention. You got to learn how to live. You got to ask somebody for help. Why don't you ask me to help? And then something positive like the lifers, you know, programs, they've changed the way they think, they changed the way they act. I came in, i say about three, three years ago, when I was young. Uh, I was looking for an exit, so to speak. I wanted to change, I wanted something different, you know, because I stayed basically in the box, you know, doing my own thing. And, and um, I seen life was as a place of enlightenment. You know, it was offering me something that I didn't have no knowledge of. And um, when I was introduced to it, I came in, you know, I was like, well, it's going to be like another program, like, uh, hey, 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 and then you're going to sit down, you're going to get up, you know, basically, you really don't get nothing out of it to me. But it gets you more involved here at the Lifeless Program to me, in my opinion. Uh, you stay active doing something. They have a lot of youthful things to do. You know, they're just building, uh, right now, the youthful uh, house awareness 
You know, it's going to be dealing with GED, uh, tutoring, uh, building more strength and intellectual strength, as well as spiritual strength, you know. This is the same thing here, just a secluded area. You know, just like another word. You know, you have to cope from day to day. But, you know, basically I had to fight almost every day to uphold the image, trying to be something that was not, you know, trying to uphold that character that I played on the outside, you know. But when I came to the realization that really my friends that I thought I had on the outside were my friends, and I started to realize that those people that, that said they loved me, they didn't love me, you know. And when I came to that realization, you know, I, I really started changing, I really started putting down all those uh, characteristics that would work against me instead of for me. And this program, see the program directed me, you know. So uh, with this program and with His Grace and Mercy, I said that, that's what it is. That's really changed my attitude, my thought pattern, everything. You know, and the program that I implemented within this program played a very valuable part. I learned that uh, during my younger years in life, you know, without me having that a male figure in the household without me having, uh, putting myself, you know, really pushing myself to be somebody in school, I found out that within me there is greatness, you know. Within me I could be somebody, you know, as long as I sacrifice the time that I wanted to, to run with the in crowd, you know. It really, it really wasn't me, but I found out within me that there's a person that, want, that wants to be a better citizen of life. There's, there's a person who me that's trying to come out, and if I continue to do those things that got me in here, it would never surface, I would never lose my full potential. Basically, I would try to implement to them by example through my lifestyle, because if I can get them to change their thoughts, they'll change their life, and they'll change the world. These guys in here, my lifers, I guarantee you, 50% of them had another chance in, in life. On that side, to make it, I really believe it in my heart that they can. They, were, they have a GED tutoring program through the Life is program. And, uh, and then most of all, uh, the change that I see with uh, an inmate named Torino changing uh, inmates' lives because of his knowledge of this direct program. He is such a great facilitator. When he is finally released from the Department of Corrections, I see him going great places because he believes in what he's doing, and I believe in what he's doing. I've watched what he does, and it's all heartfelt and quality, and it will change lives. I can see it changing lives, and maybe changing lives in individuals before they get to the point that they come inside these walls. This is not a scare straight program. We're not trying to scare you. We're just showing you prison reality, okay? Because like I was telling y'all earlier, I have 300 years. That's what I'm sentenced to. I've already done 17 years. And in here, there's nothing to look forward to. But like I said, if we can just help you stay out of this prison, we can promise something.